welcome Mark Howery from the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. Mark, I'm really excited to work on Purple Martin houses well, with I, you today. I am too, and I appreciate you inviting me to, to work with you on martins. Now they're really a unique bird because they're dependent on humans for their housing. That, that's true, especially here in the eastern United States. It, it is, uh, they're, they're very unique in that respect because most birds do not have a long-term association with people. But martins have been living in association with people since before colonial up, yeah. times, be mm -hmm. before European settlers came to the United States. Uh, Native American tribes would put up martin houses. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually, they used gourds back in those days to attract martins. They, they felt that the martins helped to uh, ward away crows uh, that oh, would okay. try to raid their gardens, uh, as well as doing insect control. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the early colonists followed suit and, and also did housing. So you know, we have martins that have been living in association with people for at least 500 years, maybe longer. Mm -hmm. And they're colonial, they live in groups, and that's why we see these big houses instead of individual houses. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and there are in the east coast, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the west coast of the United States, there are some solitary martins, but yes, the, most of the martins are colonial, like a lot of swallows. Right. Well, we've selected a wood house that we're gonna put up here at the gardens, and um, I just selected wood because of its good insulation. What are some of the good characteristics when you're looking at a house that make an ideal house for okay. my purple well, martins? I, wood is excellent because mm -hmm. of the insulation quality of it. It tends to be heavier and more expensive. That's the, the only downside, yes. but it's great uh, mm -hmm. in terms of, of for, to insulating the nest from heat, mm -hmm. uh, being resistant to predators. What I really like about this style is mm -hmm. the depth of the box. Uh, 20 years ago, we used to recommend uh, compartments that were about six inches by six inches square. We mm -hmm. felt that was kind of the norm. Uh, but as people have experimented with different designs, we've learned that deeper boxes are actually better. And so this is six inches wide and 12 inches deep. Uh, and that's much better because it provides the martins with some protection against owls and hawks. And people don't, don't realize this, but when you have a colony of birds and a lot of activity, it attracts predators. Uh, and, and many people have dealt with owls coming in, landing on the perches and reaching their legs in and getting martin chicks. But in these deep boxes, they can't. So that's an advantage of this style. I also um, selected a house that has these little nesting trays and I thought that was good for cleaning them out and monitoring the nest as well. It is. It is excellent for cleaning it out. It's, it's always important after the end of the nesting season to clean out materials so that you don't have a buildup of parasites within a box. This has this nice lip that prevents eggs or young chicks from, from rolling out or being pushed out of the box and it also encourages the martins to nest toward the back of the compartment which they should do instinctively mm -hmm. um, so yeah these are fantastic okay. the opening on a martin house there's a lot of different opinions on that i've started with the circular opening which mm -hmm. is kind of traditional that is traditional um, but i also understand that there's a crescent shape opening which helps keep starlings out right mm -hmm. with these nice deeper boxes here mm -hmm. you, you have greater protection from predatory birds like owls and hawks, but the downside is that these boxes are more attractive to starlings. Okay. But fortunately, starlings are a little bit bigger than purple martins, and so people have experimented with different shaped openings, and they've kind of come up with a crescent design that can fit over this round hole for keeping starlings out. Though typically, it's something that uh, we recommend, or that purple martin people recommend you not institute until you have an established colony. When, when you're trying to get martins that first year or two, you want to make it as easy as possible for them to come and go. So the traditional round hole that's oh, right around two inches uh, in diameter is the way to go. Okay. Now we've been talking primarily wood, but there's also aluminum and plastic houses, which are cheaper, of course, so that's one benefit, but there's, you know, it's a kind of a trade-off too. There are mm -hmm. trade-offs. They are cheaper. Uh, they're also lighter, so you don't need as large of a pole. Mm -hmm. uh, some people find them easier to raise and lower for monitoring, but then the da but there are downsides. They're not as well insulated against heat and cold, mm -hmm. um, and so you have to, particularly in the case of aluminum ones, and in plastic as well, you have to have ventilation holes in them okay. for the summer. Good ventilation, and with the plastic, you want to have a really good UV 
protection and make sure that it's thick enough to keep that heat, uh, the sun from coming in. Yes, yeah. we're, we're in a part of the country where summer heat is a, is a real issue for martins. Fortunately, martins are an early nester, so a lot of them nest and raise their young before the real heat of summer hits. You'll find a lot of martins around here fledge their young in the first week or two of July, and then okay. they're done. Very good. Now you mentioned the heavy duty pole system, and we have that here to take a look at. Um, this box weighs 80 pounds and that's pretty significant. So we need a nice sturdy um, mounting system. And so we have the poles. I already uh, in installed the base in the ground in concrete, but I want to take a look at this and the winch system. Tell us a bit about mounting. Well, with, uh, with mounting, a lot, of the, a lot of the designs now uh, are, are built to either mount on a telescoping pole mm -hmm. or on a winch system. When you have a large wooden box like this, you really need a winch system, yeah, and uh, not a telescoping whoops, sorry. pole. Sorry, here's the pulley uh, portion of that. Um, the wire would go through at the top of the house. Right, mm -hmm. right. And then you just have the simple winch here that raises and lowers the mm -hmm. house. And one of the things that we'll, we'll talk about later is that it's very important to monitor these boxes to uh, to make sure that you keep starlings and sparrows out that mm -hmm. you have an idea that have how your martin chicks are progressing and and we really recommend that houses be checked about every five to ten days mm -hmm. uh, so having it's a pulley system or a telescoping pole is really important okay um, another thing that we can see here there's a little opening for yeah. these uh, poles these will hang out above the house, right? Yeah, and mm -hmm. it provides an additional perch for the martins to sit on. Mm. And that actually is a big attractant. If the martins have a way to sit above or near the house, you're more likely to attract activity mm. to the house. Now you mentioned a telescoping pole, and that's good for the lighter boxes? Yeah, aluminum and plastic okay. boxes. And we just have one here, kind of an example. Let's Oops. put that in down. And I, uh, it has a little locking system and just slides in. So this is nice to lower um, your house when it's up in the air. You can bring it down so it's at a manageable level. Yeah, yeah. And in terms of height, um, mm -hmm. we usually recommend a height of not less than 12 feet. Uh, and probably not more than say 18 to 20 feet. So a telescoping pole is really good for that. And one last thing, when, when you have a telescoping pole, it's important to mark the, the cardinal direction that your box is facing so that you have it facing that same direction each time. You don't want to shift it because that can disorient the adult markings. Okay. 